Remember in the first part I showed you how to choose your colors and this is a Mokumegane made in that color a scheme but it doesn't look good does it? Remember that I showed you for example you can choose a shaded black and a tinted orangish yellow and a regular orangish yellow or um, a tinted blue or a shaded blue and then the tinted yellow this is what's going on here there are actually five different shades and uh, tints and uh, tones and then the layers were way too thin and the colors are getting lost none of the colors is actually more dominant and you need to have that uh, and there is too much deformation that's too crowded and seeing that that one is passed through the pasta machine so it was way more crowded than that so let's see this is exactly that color scheme the blue and the orangish yellow so what am I going to do I'm going first to uh, make um, a light gray and that is I am going to use one part of white to one eighth of a part of black well yeah usually it's a good idea when you don't try to cut through paper it might come off easier so one part white one eighth of a part of black that would be exactly like eight parts of white to one part of black so I'm going to first make this gray. Make the gray. Make the gray. Okay, there we go. Then I am going to tone the blue. That is, I am going to mix all that white gray with the blue and tone it remember the tints the tones and the shades then I want to tint the orangish yellow and I'm going to go for a very strong tint uh, I am getting one part of white and as you can see I'm not getting a full part of orange I am not getting even a half part of orange or a quarter I'm getting one eighth so that would be the exact same um, thing as for the gray it's one part of white to eight uh, one eighth of orangish yellow and actually I want to go even whiter than that so I'm going to put one more so it would be like 16 parts of white to one part of orangish yellow so practically two full squares of white to one eighth of yellow now I have them all on the same thickness and actually no I want that orangish yellow strong color to be more like a shaded area so I put it on the thinnest setting yes you can have your layers not all of the same thickness especially when you're looking for special effects so I will want that orangish yellow to be pretty much like a faint shadow aura around the blue. So I have everything on the thickest setting except for the orangish yellow that's on the thinnest setting. And I am arranging everything. You saw it's black, then the toned blue, then the orangish yellow on thin, then the tinted orangish yellow, and let's try not to repeat the errors in that one. So, first of all, I am going to thin out the layers. Obviously, this is what is done in a Mokumegane. Make sure that you turn around your stack don't uh, flatten it only on one side because you'll have one of the colors more flattened than the other one and uh, check from time to time how thick your layers are remember that you will stack them and then go with the roller again a little bit over them so they will get even more thinner more thin more thinner okay so 
considering that I need a few more roll pass, roller passes after which I will be ready to cut and stack now as a piece of advice uh, it is fine now and as a piece of advice usually you have the very bottom of the Mokumegane stack that is pretty much a loss so one thing that you can do you can just uh, take the pieces and scraps and you'll see that when I'm stacking, I'm stacking the very last piece upside down and I'll explain in a moment why. So take all the trimmings and then just uh, mix them together. I am stacking it like that because usually the very top layer is a loss. So I don't want to have a loss. Uh, I'm taking the trimmings, I'm going to kind of twist them again and then flatten them with the roller and then put them at the very bottom of the stack being with the same colors as the stack even if I get some slicing and the, with the formation that will be just fine but I am losing less clay this way now I am going to flatten it a little bit more with a lot of care so I don't flatten them too much because you've seen what happens when you flatten too much and once I am done it looks good I'm going to start deforming it now again I don't oh goodness yes that is a fork no I am not using the fork for eating because I already used it on polymer clay and I'm only using it on polymer clay so um, I'm not going to deform it too much you saw I did two pokes with the um, fork then I'll do two cuts with the wavy blade then one cut with the rigid blade with the non-cutting side and then I'll make a few pokes with uh, a paintbrush handle and uh, that will be pretty much it I will start pushing my stack back together and make sure that it is well uh, flattened so the layers came back in place forming the Mokumegane pattern after which I can start slicing and I might have some issue slicing because my hands are bothering me today but oh well so this is what I was talking about when losing the top layer but it's not too bad and actually you know what let's do it and there we go now see how that orangish yellow that was on the thinnest setting uh, shows like just a faint aura of color around where the blue is and see how I'm messing up my cutting but anyway uh, you see how much nicer this one is because the layers number one were not too thin number two uh, there are not so many colors so each color has its own individuality number three uh, ultimate tint and ultimate shade white and black they will always give an extra oomph and I have kept the toned blue as the dominant color so at this point the tinted orangish yellow is just very faint around the white the orangish yellow that was very thin is very faint around the blue and I have as major colors the white the toned blue and the black and the black kind of interferes interferences with the blue so look at all these pretty patterns compared to if I would have done more deformation or if I would have uh, thinned out the layers even more than I did so in Mokumegane like in many other things when it comes to polymer clay uh, less is more 
you get way better effects and way better patterns when you don't go too thin, when you don't add too many colors, and when you don't do too much deformation. Because it's much nicer to get the patterns at the cut instead of having to go with them through the pasta machine in order to have to separate those layers that were way too thin and the crowding. And uh, I will show you in later parts of uh, the tutorial on Mokumegane how you can get various effects, including 3D effects, even without using uh, pearlescence and metallics, because you can uh, obtain that even with the regular colors. But uh, in this episode, in this part, I wanted to address how you stack the layers and how you choose the colors. In the next one, we will be talking about uh, how uh, advanced layering happens and then on uh, the formation of the stack. And here you have both examples of the Mokumegane. They are both following the same uh, color theory, um, but one has more thought in it and the other one is just uh, an application without thought. Happy clean!